Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back with me Nathan. In this video, I want to show you how to build high quality software faster using Spackit and KiloCode. So if you've been using coding agents to help you build apps, you've probably noticed that the results can be quite inconsistent. Sometimes it works great, but other times, maybe most of the times, the code looks fine until you try to run it. Maybe the code doesn't compile, maybe it only solves part of what you asked for, or maybe it works but the structure just isn't how you'd build it yourself. Well, this happens because while coding agents can recognize patterns and generate code faster than humans can type, they still need clear, structured instructions to produce consistent results. To solve this problem, GitHub decided to release Packet, an open source toolkit that helps you generate clear, concrete project requirements, technical specifications, and implementation plan that's compatible with AI agents. Packet is a tool that can help you get started with spec-driven development, a new development methodology that treats specifications as living, executable instructions for coding agents. In spec-driven development, specifications become the source of truth. When something breaks, you check on the spec. When the project grows, you refine the spec, and when a task looks out of scope, you break the spec into more manageable chunks. Instead of relying on vibe coding, where outputs can be unpredictable and lack structure, spec-driven development gives you a clear framework that turns specs into solid implementation plans. It's precise, complete, and reliable enough to generate high-quality applications. Now, all of this sounds promising, and that's why in this video, I want to show you how to get started with spec-driven development using SpecKit and KiloCode. All right, to get started with SpecKit, you need to install the CLI tool first, which is called Specify. There are two ways you can install Specify, either permanently or temporary. But no matter which method you choose, you need to use UV to get the tool. If you're unfamiliar, UV is a Python package manager that you can install for free. To install the tool, you need to go to its installation page, which I will link in the description below. Here, there are many installation methods provided by UV, but let's just use the first method described here. If you're using Windows, then you can click on the tab here, but since I'm on a Mac, I I will copy this installation command instead. Open your command line or terminal tool, paste the command there, and press enter. After a while, you will see this notification saying that UV and UVX are now installed. That's good. The next step is to install specify, so back in SpackKit's GitHub page, copy the installation command here, paste it in the terminal, and then press enter. And the tool is now installed. To check if the tool is correctly installed, just run the specify command, and if you see the specify logo, that means the tool is installed properly. The next step is to create a project, so let's run the specify init command, followed by the project name. Since I want to create an expanse tracker app, I will just call this expanse tracker. Press enter, and then Spackit will show some output, such as the project name, the working path, and the target path. And then it asks you to choose your AI assistant. As you can see here, SpecKit supports various AI coding agents, but I want to use Kilo Code for this demo, so let's select it here. And then SpecKit will ask you to choose the script type. It's either Shell or PowerShell. Uh, PowerShell is recommended for Windows, but for Linux or Mac, just use the Shell script instead. Now, SpecKit will generate the starter project for us, and when it's done, you will see this next steps guide. Uh, let's open the project in VS Code. And here we have Kilo Code open on the right side, and on the left side we have files generated by Spackit. Uh, there's this Kilo Code folder containing Spackit workflows, and there is the Specify folder containing memories, scripts, and templates. All of these are used for spec driven development, which we will start right away. If we go back to the terminal, we can see the order of the commands we need to run over here. First, we need to run constitutions to establish project principles, and then we need to run specify to create baseline specification, followed by plan to create implementation plan, and tasks to generate actionable tasks before running the implement command. There are also optional commands to verify and enhance the quality of the output, but let's just focus on the core commands for now, as they are already enough for most cases. 
So back in VS Code, the first step is to declare the project's governing principles so that the agent knows what's important for your project. This helps ensure consistency in decision making throughout all subsequent development paces. Here, I will select Spackets Constitution command, and then I will say create principles focused on clean code and delightful user experience, as I want an app that is maintainable and easy to use. Press enter and let Kilo Code process the request. After a while, it will generate this document outlining the principles for the app. The first principle is clean code first, where every line of code must be written with clarity and maintainability as the primary goal and then it writes the requirements that adheres to this principle. Next, we have the user-centric design, which cover various aspects of UI and UX. And after that, there are other principles such as quality assurance, performance and accessibility, as well as simplicity and clarity. There is also development standards here for code organization, error handling, and so on. So the first thing you need to do is to review this constitution document. And when everything is as you want it to be, you can continue to the next step, which is to run the specify command. In this second step, you need to describe what you want to build. Note that you should focus on the what and why here and not the tech stack. For example, I will write, build an application that can help me track my expenses. I can record, categorize, and analyze financial transactions. Expenses have details such as amount, date, category, and payment method. Include filters for viewing expenses like date range, category, or amount, and generate visual summaries like charts and graphs for better insights. This is where you just write the features and why you want them. Now press enter and let Kilo Code work on the request. After a while, you will see the specification document as follows. This document focuses on the feature that you want to implement, breaking it down as user stories. The first story is to record user expenses. After that, we have view and filter expenses, manage categories, visual analytics dashboard, and payment meta tracking. There are other details such as age cases, success criteria, and so on. Again, this is something that you need to check and make sure that it's aligned perfectly with your vision. Once you're ready, continue to the third step, which is to run the plan command. Now, this is where you focus on the technical requirements of the project. For example, I will write, the application uses feed with minimal number of libraries, use vanilla HTML, CSS, and JavaScript as much as possible. Also, store data in a local SQLite database. Press enter and Kilo Code will generate the implementation plan based on the specifications provided from the previous step. This document is usually a bit shorter than the other as it focuses strictly on the technical context and the principles to follow when implementing. Once the plan is created, the next step is to break down the plan into specific, actionable tasks that can be executed in the correct order. To automate this process, we will use the Spacket Tasks command. Press Enter and let the agent process the request. And now we have the tasks document outlining all the tasks required to complete the user stories. Here, we have Pace 1, which is the app setup, and then Pace 2, the foundational requirements that must be completed before the rest of the user stories can be implemented. Then Pace 3 to 7 will implement all user stories, while Pace 8 will be the final polish. All in all, we have 186 tasks in 8 paces. That's really a lot of tasks, as we want this to be a quality software that can be shipped to production. With the tasks created, the last step is to start implementing those tasks. So let's run the spacket implement command. Press enter and let Kilo Code process the request. After a while, it will generate a step-by-step -step plan that basically follows the tasks generated earlier. On this step, Kilo Code will start generating the configuration files and application code to turn the specifications into quality application. Now, this implementation process will take some time, so I will skip ahead to when it's finished. Alright, so Kilo Code has finished implementing all of the described tasks. We can see the task list here and all 8 paces, which contains 186 tasks have all been completed. It probably took around 30 minutes for the implementation alone, as one pace took about 3 to 5 minutes. Now, if we see the code base on the left side, there are so many files and code generated by the agent as it follows SpecKit's implementation plan. If you've been using AI coding agent for a while, you will notice that the output is different from using simple prompts. 
Now let's test the app for a few minutes on the browser. First, here's the expenses page. So we can see the filters up here and then the expenses will be shown below. Let's try to add some expenses add some amount and then select category and payment method. All right, we can add the data here and then let's add another one. Okay, next, let's try to filter by payment methods. Uh, it works. Now filter by date range, uh, last month, there's no transaction yet. So let's get back to this month and then uh, let's try to edit the expense data, change the number. All right, it works. Now let's see the dashboard. And here we can see visual analytics of all expenses. There are insights such as top category, most used payment method, average spending, highest spending, and so on. Down here we have a pie chart for spending category. And then we have spending trends, but there is not enough data. Uh, we need more data to show the trends. And then there is payment method breakdown. So it looks quite nice. And then we have the categories page here. Uh, this is where we can manage the categories. There are default categories over here and we can also create a new one. Uh, so let's try it. I'm just going to label this as investments and then choose the color, uh, maybe light green here. Add the category and it shows up here. We can edit or delete that as well. Uh, let's try to delete and the category is now gone. Uh, I will explore the app more later, but overall, I hope you can see how SpackKit can help you build an app by using specs as the source of truth. First, you create the guiding principles for the project, and then you focus on describing what the app can do. After that, you create the implementation plan, mentioning the tech stack before generating tasks, and finally execute on those tasks. By using this approach, the coding agent can generate better production-ready application that's aligned with your vision. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. Now you know how to use SpecKit and Killer Code to bring structure into your AI coding workflow. With this spec-first approach, the AI coding agent can now follow implementation plans that are precise, complete, and reliable. This allows you to ship quality apps faster. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and get some value out of it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'll join the conversation and reply as often as I can. If you're new to the channel, my name is Nathan and I help you build profitable apps and projects using AI and other tools. Make sure to subscribe if that's something you find useful. Don't forget to like this video, turn on the notification bell, all that good stuff as it really helps the channel to grow. With that being said, thanks so much for watching until the end. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in other videos. Bye bye!